Hi, this is Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be looking at how you can sort the order of the y-axis on a ribbon chart. Okay, so let's get started. So there's a question posted on the video that I created that was related to creating a, a, a visual, which is a ribbon chart visual. So this is it here. And the question is a good question, and it was, how do we display, if we want to display the lowest number at the top and the highest number at the bottom, how do we go about that? Okay, so 16 would be the bottom, then 11, and, and, and then it would build up from there. And then it would be four along the top, because it might well be the case that you want to see it in that order. So um, I think we both had a good look around the, 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 the settings, and there was no obvious setting. Sometimes you can get a setting that on, on certain visuals that allows you to flip the, the y-axis, but not in this one at the moment. Um, there is an option here to sort the legend. Now, all that does is basically sort the order that these are displayed in at the side here. It does also change the the order that um, tied values are displayed. So if I sort this, this is sorting ascending. If I keep an eye on these two here, if I sort descending, we can see that that's flipped, but it only it only matches it or only only affects values where they're exactly the same. So these ones here that are eleven and twelve, they they were flipped to be ascending or descending because of the alphabetical order of the these categories in the legend. So that's not much much good. But then I saw a video, and it was by um, another um, excellent YouTuber called Kerbal, um, Kerbala, C U R B A L, Kerbal, yeah. And I'll leave a link below. I highly recommend that you subscribe to her channel because she's got lots and lots of good content and really knows her stuff. And I'm going to talk you through, I thought it was so good, I'm going to talk you through what it is here. Um, so the first thing that you do, the first step, is, um, is that you actually create a new measure. And in that measure, what we're going to do, if I just make this a little bit bigger, or click on here, we're actually going to multiply this value here by minus one. Okay, now it's going to give us a negative value. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then we're going to add it into this visual here. Now here's what I've got here. So what I've done here is I've added in this visual here, or this measure here, which has been multiplied by negative one, and we can see it's not ideal, but it is better. And you can see the highest numbers at the top, and then we can see the values um, in descending order from negative 4 through to negative 16 um, or whatever the negative value is. So it's a solution of a sort. Um, now that's not the whole solution. This is a bit that Kabul went into in a bit more detail and reminded me, I keep forgetting that you can do this. Um, you go into this model here because we don't want to see the negative number, we want to see a positive number. And we click on the this um, this measure here. Just make sure we've got the right one. Uh, not that one. There we go. Negative. So number of non-attained work order negative. And what you can do is you can add a format in here, and you can define the format of that number. So if I open it up and go to custom, okay. And there's a load of different custom options here. And I'm going to select the one at the bottom here. And this is really just a template to get it started. Now, this particular custom format, because it's got this semicolon in between here, this particular format allows you to define a format for numbers which are positive and negative. Okay, so if you've got instances, particularly in finance, where you get negative and positive numbers, then it allows you to use a different format. In this example here, we've got dollars, um, and then we've got dollars surrounded by these brackets if it's negative. So the first format, is going to be the used for positive numbers and the second format is going to be used for negative numbers. Now these are just placeholders. Um, we're going to get rid of the dollars because we don't want to see these dollars. And this hashtag and zeros are placeholders. So if it's got a hashtag there, it's going to display a number if there is a number. And if there's no number, it's going to display a blank. And this really helps us to accommodate any thousands or higher. And that's what that, um, that comma is doing there. And then the zero at the end means that if there is a number, even a, a whole number, just a number one, 
then it's going to display that number. Okay, so we need that zero as a catch-all for, for, for single digit numbers essentially. So that's what we're going to do. Now what I'm going to do for the second part of that format, so we're happy enough if it's a positive number there, we're going to use just the, the normal number. Now we don't want the brackets to dis be displayed, so we're going to get rid of these. Okay, and we're just going to use this number here and we're going to display the same format for positive or negative. So let's go back into our visual and we can see that the negative number has been um, displayed as a, a, a positive number essentially. It's got no preceding, um, what do you call it, preceding negative beside it. It's just displayed as a positive number because we've not defined that in this value here. Now if we wanted to have a negative number in there with a negative, then we can go back in here and we can see that that negative has been, has been added in. So, okay, I'll take that back out again. Okay, so I probably would have liked to have seen this build up from the bottom upwards instead of building from the top downwards, but it is better than, um, than no solution at all. And you can use this on other um, other line, line charts or, or, or bar charts where you need to actually go and, um, and sort the, the y-axis. Got to be careful, you've got to make sure you don't start using this measure in any of your other calculations because it's obviously going to have that multiply by by um, by negative 1, so it's going to mess things up a little bit. But in terms of being able to display it as a visual on the screen, it's a, it's a workaround. Not ideal, but it's certainly a workaround. So hopefully you found this useful, hopefully it'll get you out of a, a tricky situation if you do need to sort that that y-axis and if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos I release then hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I publish a video which is around about every week. Thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video.